So this is the WordPress dashboard. It's the first thing you'll see when you log into WordPress. And here is actually a custom dashboard that's uh, introduced by SiteGround. And if we go to plugins, we can see that there's a plugin called WordPress Starter that's introduced by SiteGround or included when we install WordPress. And you should always uh, delete plugins that you don't use because they can affect the page security and also the page speed. So we don't need this WordPress Starter plugin. So I will deactivate it and delete it. And now if we return to the dashboard, you will see the default WordPress dashboard instead. It looks a little bit messy, so we will clean it up quickly. So this welcome to WordPress box, we can just click dismiss. And then we have all these boxes. So if we click screen options in the top right, we can actually decide which boxes we should see and which ones we should hide. So uh, maybe WordPress events and news is not super relevant for us. So let's hide that one. Site health is a nice thing to see. And it's also nice to see that our site health is good. Uh, quick draft is something that I never used, so we can actually hide that one. Uh, at a glance, let's drop this one there. Uh, could be interesting to see uh, the content on our website and the uh, theme and the WordPress version. And the activity, we have uh, published some posts. Let's drag that one up there and we can close the screen options. So this looks a little bit more clean and we got rid of one uh, unnecessary plugin. We can actually jump back to plugins again just to see because there are two more plugins there. We have the SG optimizer or the site ground optimizer. And as it says in the description, this plugin uh, will link your WordPress applications with all the performance optimizations provided by SiteGround. So this will basically make your website load faster. And this is a good thing, but I would recommend that you deactivate this while building or creating your website. And when you are done, uh, we could activate it. So I will deactivate it for now. Then we also have a SiteGround security plugin that adds some uh, security features. And that's also a really nice thing. So if you want to check the settings for the security plugin, you can click SG security in the um, menu. And we can see the recent uh, activity like logins and, and uh, page visits. And uh, we can actually see that they have activated lots of uh, security features by default so we don't have to do that ourselves and also some login security so if someone tries to log in with the wrong credentials they will be blocked or uh, disable admin username we can actually do that you should never use admin as a username that's the first thing that the hackers will try to to use so let's keep that one on to have some good security and we go back to the dashboard Okay, so we will first go through the most important settings in WordPress, and that's actually in the settings tab. So we click that one and we will land at the general settings. So we already looked at a couple of these settings before, like the title, tagline, and the URLs. So that's already fixed. Uh, we have the administration email address, so that's the main administrator for the website. You can have several admin users, but this is the main admin. And this is the one that will have email, uh, email notifications if there is a problem on the website or if something is uh, automatically updated or so. Uh, site language is also important. This should match the content on your website uh, because this will give a signal to the search engines uh, to index it for that language. And uh, also some um, small texts like read more and stuff from the theme uh, will be in this uh, language. So time zone can also affect if you schedule posts to be published at a certain time. So you can find your time zone and I'm uh, in Sweden, so I will choose Stockholm. So I'll click save changes. And uh, let's go to the reading tab. And this is also a really important th uh, setting to, to, to look into. You have to do this. Uh, the first one here is your homepage displays. And you might remember that if you go to divicrib.com, 
Our homepage is here and it lists all our blog posts. So this is from the early days of WordPress when it was just a blog platform. So this is actually still the default setting of WordPress. But we are creating a corporate website and we don't want it to look like a blog. We want to have a, a real homepage. So instead of displaying our latest posts on the homepage, we will show a static page. So we click that one and then we can choose which page that should be the home page. And in this case, we've called it home. So if I save the changes and reload my home page, we can actually see that the posts are gone and we have our home page, which is just a heading for now. Um, so that's the first and uh, really important thing to do here in the reading settings. The other one is search engine visibility. So when we are creating our website, we don't want Google to index it and people finding it by mistake, dropping in because there could be incorrect information or, or information that shouldn't be public yet. So I uh, always discourage search engines from indexing this site by clicking this box and then I click save changes. So now there's a tag on this page saying that the search engine shouldn't index it. The next important setting that I always look at when I start with WordPress is permalinks. So that's your URL structure. We can go back to our website here and we can see that we have divcrib.com and if I click about us, I can see the URL there, the permalink is dvcrib.com slash about us. So the URL up here uh, is taken from the page name, the title of the page. And if I click contact us, we have the same thing here. It's slash contact us. So this is a nice permalink structure. And we can see here that it's called post name. This is uh, the default permalink structure when you install WordPress. And if you don't use uh, a blog feature or, or news on your website, uh, this is a good thing. You can leave it at this and just save. But if you have a blog or uh, like a news section, which we are using, uh, let's have a look at the demo site. There we go. So here we have our news, but we want our news posts or articles to have a logic permalink structure. So here we have slash news, we have the category, which is case for this news article, and we have the uh, news article title here. So that's the permalink structure that we want. And since on this page, we only have post name in the permalink structure, we can have a look. So if I click one of my posts, I can see that the permalink is just dbcrypto.com and then we have the URL just at the root. I would like to change that. And we can also look at the Elegant Themes blog. It's always inspiring to look at the, the professionals. And if I click like a blog post here, like a free header and footer template, I can see that the URL here is elegantthemes.com slash blog. That's what we call news on our websites. And we have DV resources. That's the category for this post. And then we have we have the post name. So this is the permalink structure that we want to create for our posts. So I'll choose a custom structure and uh, I will delete this and I will say that it should be slash news slash and we want to have the category. So that's a dynamic field and we want to have our post name and that's also a dynamic field. That's why we have this percentage. Uh, signs there. I will save it and if I go back to our um, development website here we have the old structure. I try to refresh this page I will have an error message because now we have a new URL for this post. So if I click the post again here to the right I can actually see that we have a new permalink st structure. So I can see that this post uh, is under news slash case which is the category for this article and we have the post name in the url and if i choose another news article from uh, from another category i can see that it's news slash and now it's inspiration so that's the category for for this article 
So I would say that this is more user friendly and uh, also better for the search engines and not putting everything down here in the root. That was the most important settings in WordPress that you need to know about. And uh, just a friendly reminder, don't forget uh, when you are ready with your website and ready to publish that you need to, to go here to settings and reading and you need to uh, remove this discourage search endings from indexing this site and save because otherwise it's like you open a new store but you forget to unlock the doors. So this is easy to forget. And uh, the other one uh, thing that you should remember when you launch your website is that you should activate the SG Optimizer plugin. So that was the settings and now we are ready to start with the fun stuff, the creative stuff, and that is uh, creating design and content for our website with the Divi Visual Builder. Mm -hmm.